Welcome, it's midnight here in Moscow. You're watching RT with me, Kevin Owen. And the breaking news, rebels have reportedly entered Tripoli from the west as fighting in Libya appears to be intensifying. Some estimates put the death toll from this weekend alone in the hundreds with around a thousand injured. It's also believed that major clashes have seen the rebels capture the capital's Mitiga airbase. Opposition forces also claim to have freed prisoners locked up during the uprising against Colonel Gaddafi's regime. Let's get more reaction on the ground now across to Mari Nazem Roya, he's in Tripoli, uh, and uh, she's uh, from the uh, Centre for Research on Globalisation. Mari, thanks for being on the line with us. How would you describe what's happening in Tripoli at the moment? There are targeted attacks, Kevin. They're specifically targeting the areas where international journalists are to feed panic here. Uh, NATO has done all the heavy work. This is a NATO war. Uh, make no mistake, this is a NATO war. They heavily bombed uh, cities west of here. They bombed all night without even 10 seconds of stopping. They bombed this entire city. NATO uh, landed the, uh, uh, the insurgents onto the coast of Tripoli. Uh, they have no respect for uh, the international press. I was putting up a, a sign on the hotel, on top of the hotel. I took the initiative to do that and write press, and snipers shot at me. Um, I, I implore, I, I beg, uh, I, I beg the international community, the real international community, the international community of the people, not the governments within the uh, NATO alliance, to stop this bloodshed and to, to get NATO to stop supporting this horrific attack in Tripoli. Make no mistake, this is part of the same war that is being engaged in Afghanistan, in, in Iraq, and in Pakistan, and other parts of the world. This is part of the same front. And the NATO has bombed mercilessly in this country and massacred innocent civilians. Now, Colonel Gaddafi's asked people to take up arms and defend Tripoli from the rebels. How likely is that, do you think, to bring about a strong response? Are people prepared to lay down their lives to save his regime? What is the strength of feeling behind him? Let me tell you, Kevin, quite frankly, that I was told right now, I can't confirm it, but I was told, and a lot of the Libyans here are happy, that people are amassing in Green Square and other parts of the city, taking up arms and ready to fight to defend this nation. I don't know how it'll play out. There was a huge, intense psychological war here that has hurt the war effort. The media has been they're liberally involved here. And since I'm on the topic of the media, one of my French colleagues was told by a producer by CNN, because uh, we're waiting for, to be rescued, was told by a producer by CNN that now you are going to suffer the consequences of your actions. Because he opposes the war again in the NATO war. This was a threat. This is unacceptable. The CNN should answer for this type of behavior. OK, well, we can't comment on what's happening on, on another channel, but we're taking what you say there. I mean, as the situation in the Libyan capital is obviously intensifying tonight, I mean, it's, the details are still sketchy that are coming in. A lot of this has to be verified. A number of world leaders, meantime, have again demanded that Gaddafi steps down. What other international reaction can we expect, do you think, now? Do you think he will step down at the last moment, at the 11th hour? Absolutely not. He's not going to step down. Why is this war? This war is not about Colonel Gaddafi. Colonel Gaddafi is just a pretext for this war. This war has nothing to do with Colonel Gaddafi. It has to do with stealing money from the Libyan people. That's what it has to do. Colonel Gaddafi, it could be the Prophet Mohammed or the Prophet Jesus or the Pope that's in charge of this country. And they'll still demonize him. They'll still demonize him. And I'll, I'll tell you, they have no respect for us here. They, they, NATO has to stop this war. NATO has uh, deliberately broke the arms embargo against this country. NATO has deliberately their weapons here, the French, Qatar. Why is this going on? Where is the real international community of the people? Listen, Western Europe, the United States, Turkey, Canada are not the international community. I ask governments around the world to intervene and get this to stop because there's going to be a bloodbath here and this is what exactly what NATO wants. Mardi, briefly, just listening in while you were talking there, I could hear gunshot. That gunshot was coming from close to you, was it? That was coming from nearby. <laughs> They're attacking our hotel. They're attacking where the international media is. They tried to shoot at me earlier today. Sniper fire. I was great. I was almost grazed by sniper fire when I was on the roof putting. I had to take ketchup and write on a handkerchief uh, a bed sheet press, and I had to put them on the roof here. This is this is obviously a terribly frightening time for the, for the residents of Tripoli. Uh, the people you've spoken to, the, the people you've seen around you there. Oh, what are their feelings tonight? I guess they're terribly afraid. Yeah. It's, it's mixed feelings. You know, there's a psychological process we go through. There's shock, there's denial, there's fear, and then there's resistance. 
and many of them children. I, honestly, Kevin, I'm really sorry. This hurts me to say this. I've seen young men picking up guns to, to, to defend this country. They're not. This is not about Colonel Gaddafi. The world should realize this is not about Gaddafi because the people on the other side in Benghazi are far worse than Colonel Gaddafi. A lot of the atrocities committed in Libya was when they were government members. By the way, Kevin, the United Nations uh, in Geneva, when the accusations were made about the murders in the East here, the Libyan Human Rights League is directly, directly involved in lies. This is documented. The documents will be out. And they directly lied, and five members of the Transitional Council were part of the Libyan uh, Human Rights League. They subsequently became members of the Transitional Council right after these accusations were made, and there's no basis. The entire G Geneva Human Rights Council needs to be examined, and the board members of these organizations need to be examined, because the United States, Israel, and several of the allies have a big monopoly in Geneva over this, and they're doing the same, using the same tactics against the Syrian Arab Republic in the Eastern Mediterranean right now. Mahdi, very briefly, because we want to uh, let you get on with your own plans of what you're going to do next. What, what is ahead for you for the next 12 hours? You'll be leaving the country, yeah? I've uh, contacted the Cuban embassy. Uh, I've talked to the Cuban ambassador. I might leave through the Cuban. You see there's a media divide here, too. There's, uh, there's the Chinese, uh, Press TV of Iran, uh, the independent journalists, and, uh, and uh, Telesur and the Cubans on one side, as well as myself and the others are on the other side. So you, you can see that there's, there is an there is international divide. Okay, Madi Nizam Royer in Tripoli uh, from the Centre for Research on Globalisation. Thank you for talking to us uh, live on RT International. We wish you well and uh, hope you continue to be safe.